Chairman Jordan complied with that letter shortly after President Trump's attorney sent that letter to uh, the committee, which is highly unusual, a very highly unusual act. And in fact, after that, on March 20th, Chairman Jordan, together with the Committee on House Administration, Chairman Brian Steele, as well as the chairman of this committee, wrote to District Attorney Bragg and then demanded a sweeping series of documents, including communications between the DA's office and the Department of Justice, also highly unusual. And yet we are doing this all over again for the Hunter Biden show to someone who has pleaded guilty and has taken responsibility for not filing taxes for two years. This is ludicrous. Beam me up, Scotty. There's no intelligent life down here. None. Committee, I believe that, um, I believe you said that this, in, that you began this investigation in 2018, correct? That, that is correct. And so some of the events that you discuss in your deposition took place two, three, four years ago, correct? Over the last several years. Yeah, that would be correct. Um, in your deposition in front of the Ways and Means Committee and in your testimony before us today, you have relayed your memory of events that occurred over the course of a nearly five-year investigation. Um, and uh, Mr. Ziegler, when you testified before the Ways and Means Committee, uh, you also testified that you were told that it was then Attorney General William Barr who made the decision to merge the D.C. and Delaware Hunter Biden investigations, correct? I did testify to that. Correct. And um, a few weeks after that testimony, uh, your attorney wrote in a letter to Congress, I quote, uh, Mr. Ziegler is confident he was told by his supervisor that the merging of the cases was at the direction of an official at the Department of Justice. However, on further reflection, Mr. Ziegler cannot definitively state that his then supervisor said that the Department of Justice official directing the merger of the cases was Attorney General Barr, correct? That is correct, and I can tell you that I actually refreshed my memory from mm -hmm. looking at my emails, and mm -hmm. there was an email that I found from my supervisor at that time that stated what had happened, mm -hmm. and I can turn that over to the House Ways and Means Committee at, at, at some point. And, and in that updated email, does it include Attorney General Barr or not? So I can't speak to the contents okay. of that email, but... No problem. Um, I think in light of the correction, and, you know, truly, in, in good faith, these things happen all the time, right? Um, the recollection of these investigations require an extraordinary amount of detail, and the charges of what is being brought forward today are extremely serious, which require a high threshold of evidence, um, including investigations and depositions. Um, but, you know, I, I hope you'd agree that even the best memory can be fallible at times, and... Um, that is the widely understood reality in our justice system. Uh, Mr. Shapley, uh, uh, from your testimony today, I think you would agree that it is important that um, criminal investigations be conducted fairly and free from political influence. That's why we're here today, correct? Yes, that's correct. Now, um, as you stated and as uh, was kind of discussed with Mr. Khan and, and with others, there are often disagreements. Uh, it seems as though it, within some of the um, transcribed interviews that we read, it says, yes, um, about 90% of the time there is this IRS reviewing attorneys disagree with the charging decisions of the agents in the group, correct? That, that was part of the testimony, not all of it. Um, in some of your comments, you've also noted uh, that there, you've made reference to a special counsel uh, in this situation. Um, but I believe what there might be a reference to here is the, the question of a special attorney, not a special counsel, correct? So if you're speaking about the October 7th, 2022 email that I, I documented contemporaneously on that day, uh, you know, that's why I documented it on that day so that, you know, nine months later, I'm not trying to recall mm -hmm. a, a specific word. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it says special counsel mm -hmm. authority. That's what he said that day. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, a senior executive IRS corroborated when he responded to my emails. Well. And I, I do think that that distinction is important because in this letter to, um, to Chairman Jordan, the issue at hand seems to be a, a special attorney not a special counsel, which are two distinct, different legal authorities. Um, and there also may be some confusion, I think, with respect to that as well. Um, 
Which brings me to the point of political influence. Um, whether, where there actually is a set of breadcrumbs, however, is in a set of tweets and letters sent from former President Trump to several chairs, to the chair of um, the House Judiciary Committee that we see here. In fact, um, according to a New York Times uh, article, which I'd like to present to the record today, President Trump's attorney wrote to the Judiciary Committee chairman urging him to investigate what he called, quote, a rogue local district attorney. And after, after that New York DA convened a grand jury that ultimately indicted Donald Trump, Chairman Jordan complied with that letter shortly after President Trump's attorney sent that letter to uh, the committee, which is highly unusual, a very highly unusual act. And in fact, after that, on March 20th, Chairman Jordan, together with the Committee on House Administration, Chairman Brian Steele, as well as the chairman of this committee, wrote to District Attorney Bragg and then demanded a sweeping series of documents, including communications between the DA's office and the Department of Justice, also highly unusual. In fact, on his Truth Social account later on, Donald Trump claimed that the U.S. attorney investigating Hunter Biden a U.S. attorney, by the way, that Donald Trump appointed, was, quote, a coward. And then in that, he then urged that maybe the presiding judge will have the courage and intellect to break up this, quote, cesspool of crime. Curiously, just a few days after this tweet, the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Jason Smith, sent a letter to U.S. Attorney David Weiss and Attorney General Merrick Garland who are implicated in this hearing, ask, explicitly asking them to place the whistleblower testimony from the committee's depositions into the court record, which were addressed during the chairman's opening statements before Hunter Biden's plea hearing at the end of the month. And as you can see right here, J Chairman Smith explicitly said, and I quote, entering this information into the formal record. Additionally, those two chairmen waived onto this hearing today. Highly unusual. Will the gentleman, gentlelady yield? And one moment. And when we talk about political influence, we are not here today, unfortunately, because the facts have brought us here. We are here today because Donald Trump is exerting an influence campaign in Congress when he is no longer president of the United States. In addition to that, if we want to talk about charges that have been dismissed, and if we do want to follow the evidence, perhaps we should discuss Ivanka Trump's investigation being charged, who was close to being charged with felony fraud, after Donald Trump's personal attorney provided political contributions to the local DA, those charges were dismissed, and ultimately we saw that that, that, that uh, DA Vance, President Trump's attorney provided over $50,000 in political contributions after the case was dismissed. So when we talk about political contributions, I would hope, if we are following the evidence, that, that we are willing that this committee, if this committee is going to go there, that they be willing to open investigations into the dismissal of charges against Ivanka Trump. And, by the way, if the chair, if the gentlelady from Georgia wanted to follow evidence, we should also take a look at, hypothetically, a case where sex trafficking charges against a 17-year-old girl potentially... Uh, that Gentlelady's time's expired. Thank you. Uh, I yield back. Chair now recognizes. And I want to congratulate my colleagues from across the aisle for gathering us here today, almost distracting us from the biggest investigation that is going on right now in our country and in our nation's history involving the former president and the front runner for the Republican nomination, who is currently facing a 37 count indictment this week. And maybe two weeks from now, more. And maybe two weeks from then, more. But we're spending our time talking about Hunter Biden, someone who has already pleaded guilty to not filing his taxes, having a gun charge, and now I hear also uh, paying for prostitution. But let's just remember that there was a case in New York not too long ago where our former president also got into trouble regarding payments and regarding a stripper and was found guilty of a uh, violation in civil court. 
Now, there seems to be a lot of hemming and hawing about special treatment, special treatments. When the president, just a couple of days ago, tried to delay his federal documents trial and requested the U.S. District Judge Aileen Cannon, whom he appointed to somehow or another consider the fact that he was a candidate and therefore maybe, maybe, maybe his trial should be put off until after the election. That seems to me like special treatment if I've ever heard of it before. But I'm grateful that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle are taking at least tax evasion very seriously. And I would welcome also a hearing on the former president's history of tax evasion and how long it took to see his tax returns covering 10 years and what was the outcome of that decision. You know, the Trump organization was hit with $1.6 million in Manhattan State Court being convicted of a tax scheme. So let's, let's be real when we talk about this. It's not just Hunter Biden, but as long as we're saying Hunter Biden, we forget everything else. And again, Hunter Biden did step forward and said, I did not file taxes in two years. And yes, this gun charge, I will take responsibility for. Now, um, I love the fact that we are so much in love with the IRS. In fact, Speaker McCarthy said uh, when he was elected on the 15th vote, that the first bill that he would repeal funding for was the bill that would provide for 87,000 additional IRS employees. My, don't we love the IRS? We're just gonna cut their budget. In fact, there's a member of this committee who on their own website said that they are proud to have voted to strip away the plan to empower the IRS with additional funding. So I'm going to get back to those two words again about keeping it real, and I think we really have to do that. Um, I just think, Mr. Shapley, two quick things. Um, did Hunter Biden in any way in your knowledge, uh, not Hunter, but did any of his children receive money, yes or no? Uh, I think Special Agent Ziegler would be better. To yes or no? Special Agent Ziegler would be better. Either one, yes or no? Congressman, thank you for your question. Given by the statute, I am limited in my testimony. I'm okay. I can give you, here today, but I can. We can turn over any of the records that relate to the adult children. Yes, we'd like House to see Ways those. And Means we, Committee. Wait, we'd like to see those. Really, I would, since we are so concerned about tax evasion, and we've got people at the highest levels of government doing it, and we don't want to talk about that at all. Now, here's what galls me. I don't like these attacks on the Department of Justice, the FBI, the IRS, as if they are somehow anti-U.S. agencies. Those agencies keep this democracy in check. It keeps them in float. They provide the checks and they provide the balances. And we could be, quite frankly, using our time to better talk about crime in America that's affecting everybody, attacks on women's health, the economy, budgetary issues, public education, housing, the need for senior citizens to be able to pay for prescription drugs, child poverty, and mental health, to name a few. And yet we are doing this all over again for the Hunter Biden show to someone who has pleaded guilty and has taken responsibility for not filing taxes for two years. This is ludicrous. Beam me up, Scotty. There's no intelligent life down here. None. I yield. Chairman, time's expired. Chair, uh, Chair now. Right